Hello, welcome to the course PH5 BO6 Electrodynamics 2. The contents of today's lecture is taken from a textbook of electrical technology by BL Teraja and AK Teraja. We will continue to discuss topic from chapter 2 Network Theorems. Suppose you have a voltage source uh, network, uh, you know from Thevenin's theorem, any complex network can be converted into an equivalent Thevenin circuit which consists of a, a single voltage source in series with a Thevenin's impedance ZTH. Okay. So this is the source part of the network so which generates some power or voltage which is then transferred onto a load given by load impedance Z. Now the question is under what condition maximum power will be transferred from the source to the load. This is given by maximum power transfer theorem which is also known as Jacobi's law. So maximum power transfer theorem says that maximum power transfer from a source network to a load occurs when the load impedance ZL is equal to the equivalent Thevenin impedance ZTH of the network. Now, if you imagine that PS is the power generated from the source, then as the diagram indicates, a part of the source power is going to drop across the Thevenin impedance, you call that as PTH and the remaining part is going to drop across the load. You call that as PL. So I can write so source power PS equal to PTH plus PL. Now power is I square R or in, in the case of an AC circuit I square Z. So I can write PL equal to I square ZL where current through the circuit is given by total voltage V divided by total impedance which is ZTH plus ZL. So PL equal to V divided by ZTH plus ZL whole square Z. Now what is the condition for maximum power transfer? So PL becomes maximum which I call as PL max when ZTH equal to ZL. This is what maximum power transfer theorem says. So I can write an expression for PL max. So PL max is going to be V divided by in place of ZTH, I'm going to write ZL. So ZL plus ZL whole square into ZL. So this is V square ZL divided by four ZL square. You can cancel ZL on both the sides. You get maximum power transfer PL max equal to V square divided by four Z. Let's try to prove uh, the maximum power transfer theorem. So we need to prove that when Z equal to, sorry, ZL equal to ZTH, PL becomes PL max. Okay. So we know the expression for PL and we know that uh, when PL reaches its maximum value, there is no more further change in its value. So I can write at maximum DPL by DZL equal to zero. Now substitute for PL, now we need to find the derivative of this function, you can apply the chain rule. So here V square is a constant, I'm going to take it outside the derivative. Now what does the chain rule say? Uh, this is uh, first function which is 1 divided by ZTH plus ZL whole square into derivative of second function. Derivative of ZL with respect to ZL is 1. Okay. Plus second function ZL into derivative of first function. So derivative of 1 divided by ZTH plus ZL whole square is minus 2 divided by ZTH plus ZL whole cube. Take V square to the right hand side it becomes 0 so you have 1 divided by ZTH plus ZL whole square minus 2 ZL divided by ZTH plus ZL whole cube. 1 divided by ZTH plus ZL whole square is a common factor. Take it outside, then you have inside the bracket 1 minus 2 ZL divided by ZTH plus ZL equal to 0. So this factor you can take to the right hand side, it becomes 0. So your equation gets simplified as 1 minus 
टू जेड एल डिवाइड बाई जेड टी एच प्लस जेड एल इक्वल टू जीरो टेक दिस टर्म टू द राइट हैंड साइड यू हैव टू जेड एल डिवाइड बाई जेड टी एच प्लस जेड एल इक्वल टू वन टेक दिस डिनोमिनेटर टू द राइट हैंड साइड यू हैव टू जेड एल इक्वल टू जेड टी एच प्लस जेड एल और जेड टी एच इक्वल टू जेड एल हेंस द थियरम इज ट्रू now this condition is a very important criterion in uh, electrical networks this is known as impedance match one of the classic examples of impedance matching which you will encounter in your lab experiment is suppose you have a voltage source or a function generator and you want to view the wave form what do you do you connect it to an oscilloscope right so if you uh, notice the typical resistance of the function generator or voltage source you use in your lab is around 50 ohms so you take a connecting wire which is known as a bnc cable and connect it to the input terminal of the oscilloscope and if you observe carefully under this input terminal the resistance of the terminal will be noted and it is around 50 ohm so in this case here the function generator is the source and the oscilloscope is the load so essentially what you are doing is the impedance matching so that maximum power from the function generator will be transferred to the oscilloscope in fact if you want to be very very careful about your experiment you need to also make sure that the resistance of your bnc cable is also 50 ohm in that way you have impedance matching matching at this junction as well as at this junction now if the impedance is not match what is the problem So as I said, this is a junction. So if the impedance is not matched here, what happens is a part of the signal from the function generator will be reflected back. Similarly, here also a part of the signal from the BNC cable will be reflected back. This is very similar to the case of light traveling from one medium to another medium. Okay. So if there is no difference in refractive index. then nothing happens like the entire light will pass through the second medium suppose if there is a difference in the refractive indices between two media what happens is a part of the light will be reflected just in the case of uh, uh, light traveling from air to glass okay so air has a refractive index of 1 glass has a refractive index of 1.5 so there is a refractive index mismatch so as you can see a part of the light will be reflected at the air glass interface and the remaining will be transmitted okay same is the case here moment you have a discontinuity in terms of impedance or if you have an impedance mismatch a part of the electrical signal will be reflected back okay. so this is clearly an unwanted scenario another thing what could happen is so as you can see signal reaches here from this junction a part will be reflected back when the reflected signal reaches back this junction again a part of that will be reflected in the opposite direction so i have two waves traveling in the opposite direction the superposition of these two result in a standing wave so the standing wave now will interfere with the original signal and the signal will get distorted Usually, if your signal strength is very very good, uh, this is not going to make much difference because the standing wave is typically very very weak. But if you are dealing with very feeble signal, for example, you have a nanoscale transistor and you want to make the IV characteristics, you want to measure the IV characteristics of it. So the signal you are dealing with is the order of nano volts or pico volts. So in such cases, these kind of reflections or interferences are going to create a lot of trouble. So impedance mismatching is an important consideration in electrical network. It is also very important in the case of a communication system. So you need to make sure that the transmitter impedance matches with the receiver impedance. Otherwise, once again, you will have problems like reflection, interference, which is going to uh, 
hamper your uh, communication process. Now, having understood uh, the condition for maximum power transfer, let's try to calculate what is the efficiency during maximum power transfer. So, as stated earlier, power generated by the source P is equal to PTH plus PL, which is I square ZTH plus I square ZL. Similarly, the power you draw across the load is, this is the output power, this is I square ZL. And efficiency is defined as output divided by input or power transferred to the load divided by power generated by the source, which is PL divided by PS. Substitute for PL and PS, you, you have I square ZL divided by I square ZTH plus ZL, I square I square cancel and you have the definition for efficiency equal to ZL divided by ZTH plus Z. Let's quickly calculate what is the efficiency during maximum power transfer. So we know that at maximum power transfer point, ZTH equal to ZL. So efficiency equal to ZL divided by ZL plus ZL, which is ZL divided by 2 ZL, that is 0 0.5. Or in terms of percentage, this is 50 percentage. Now, this may be counterintuitive to most of you because in one instance, I say that uh, the maximum power transfer happens at ZTH plus ZL. So concomitantly, you will expect that the efficiency of power transfer is also maximum, mostly like 100%. But here we see that even though maximum power transfer happens, efficiency only 50%. Now, what's the issue here? We are talking about two parameters. One is efficiency and one is power. Right? So clearly, these two are two different parameters. So I can illustrate the difference between these two using an analogy. Okay. It's not an example, it's, it's, it's an analogy. Okay. I'm sure many of you know driving or you are familiar with vehicles. Okay. Suppose you want to climb a, a steep hill. Which is the gear that you are going to engage? Mostly you will use the first gear or the second gear because for climbing a steep hill you need the maximum power which is generated typically by the first or second gear. But if you look at the efficiency, the fuel efficiency which you call as mileage, you know that in first or second gear mileage is the least, right? So you have maximum power but minimum efficiency. On the other hand, when you are cruising through a highway or freeway, typically you get a maximum fuel efficiency in the fourth or fifth gear. But clearly you cannot climb a steep hill using fourth or fifth gear because the power generated during those gears is very, very minimal. So you have high efficiency, but power is very low. So clearly these two are two independent things. Now, Let's try to understand the efficiency diagram for any electrical circuit. So on the x-axis you have ZTL, ZL divided by ZTH and the, the green curve represents the efficiency curve and the red curve is PL divided by PL max. So let's look at this point ZL divided by ZTH equal to 1. So this is the maximum power transfer window. As you can see, PL divided by PL max equal to 1. In other words, PL equal to PL max. So maximum power transfer happens at this point. But clearly you can see efficiency is not the highest. It is around 50%. But as you increase ZL by ZTH or when ZL is greater than ZTH, you can see that the power is decreasing but the efficiency is increasing. So clearly these two are not following the same trend, these are quite opposite. Let's uh, plug in some values here and do a number game. So you have ZL, ZTH and efficiency. So let's first start with both ZL and ZTH being equal, which is your maximum power transfer point. So ZL equal to 50 ohm, ZTH equal to 50 ohm and your efficiency is 50 divided by 100, which is 0 0.5 or 50%. 
you increase ZL a bit now ZL is 100 ohm ZTH is 50 ohm efficiency is 100 divided by 150 which is around 66 percent increase it even further make it 200 now efficiency is 200 divided by 250 which is around 80 percent so clearly as the graph indicates you can see that as the value of ZL increases the efficiency is also increasing but you expect when the efficiency increases power also to increase but clearly the power is going in the opposite direction what is the problem here the problem is that the efficiency which is defined in terms of percentage is clearly a relative parameter because moment you say percentage it is defined with respect to something right? so it's a relative parameter on the other hand power is an absolute parameter I can illustrate the difference between an absolute parameter and a relative parameter for example if I tell you that last year we had 10 percentage of students who got a, a plus grade and this year we have 20 percent of students who got a plus grade okay. so clearly this year I have more percentage of students securing a plus grade compared to last year now can I say that more number of students got A plus grade this year compared to last year? Definitely no, right? You will ask me what is the total number of students in the class? Only then I can define the percentage, right? So if I say that last year we had 50 students in the class, then 10 percentage of 50 is 5. If this year we had 20 students in the class, then 20 percentage of 20 is 4. So even though we have more percentage of students getting A plus grade this year, if you look at the absolute number, we have less number of students getting A plus grade this year compared to last year, right? So clearly there is a difference between an absolute parameter and a relative parameter. So here, as the definition suggests, efficiency is a relative parameter. You always have to specify with, with respect to what the efficiency is defined. On the other hand, power or output power is an absolute parameter. So as the graph indicates, as ZL is greater than ZTH, the efficiency is going to increase, which only means that higher percentage of the source power is transferred to the load but if we look at the absolute magnitude of the load power the load power is decreasing because as zl increases the total circuit resistance or impedance goes up because the total impedance is zl plus zth when impedance increases the current in the circuit is going to decrease and power is defined as i square z so you have total Z increasing but total current decreasing but power has a second order dependence on the current whereas the dependence on impedance is only first order. Now because of this current is going to have a higher weightage on power compared to impedance. So even though Z is increasing and I is decreasing the net effect is that the power is going to decrease. Okay. So since the power is decreasing, even though efficiency is higher, the power transfer magnitude is going to decrease. I can illustrate this with an example here. So if you start with the maximum power transfer point and if you say that your source power is 10 watt, we know that at maximum power transfer, 50 percentage of the source power is transferred so the load power is going to be 50 percentage of 10 watt which is 5 watt. Now suppose I am going to increase ZL. So when I increase ZL what happens? The efficiency is going to increase. Suppose I reach this point where efficiency is 80 percent. In the process what happens? The total impedance of the circuit had gone up and concomitantly the total current through the circuit had decreased which resulted in a decreasing source power. So my source power which was originally 10 watt now reduced to 5 watt. Now if you calculate 80% of 5 watt it is only 4 watt. Right? 
So in terms of percentage, you have an increase here, but if you look at the absolute magnitude, you have a decrease here. In other words, the maximum power will be transferred only at the at the condition ZL equal to ZDH. At this point, the efficiency of power transfer is not 100%, but only 50%. Now, this is a very, very important uh, condition for any electrical network, especially in communication system. That's for today. Thank you.